Welcome. <clears throat> we want to include wishing everyone a happy Father's Day. Wherever you are watching this service, wherever you are on your faith journey, we greet you from downtown Victoria. We are sharing some photos of a beautiful totem pole. The carver was Tony Hunt Jr., who carved here in the sanctuary, not just for Epiphany explorations, but for many months in 2013 and 14. The pole was completed in March 2014 and ceremonially moved from the church on March 14th. We honor the hosts and resource people who were part of the experiential blanket exercise that took place before the COVID restrictions set in. It's an important educational tool in learning about the effects of colonialism and the residential school system on the First Nations of Canada. The table this morning is draped in the colors honoring each of the four directions. The teachings of the four directions start with the east or yellow quadrant and run clockwise around the circle. Red symbolizes the south, black the west, and white the north. Here we congregate on the land of the Coast Salish nations. Where we now gather, generations gathered long before Europeans landed on these shores. The original inhabitants, inhabitants of this land, known to some indigenous peoples as Turtle Island, took seriously the Creator's call to be stewards of air, land, water, and creature. This morning we pray our thanks for their conservancy. We exist in this place because of the lessons they continue to teach. Let us come before the Creating One as we offer our prayers, hear holy story, and sing sacred songs. Indigenous Day of Prayer, usually the Sunday before National Indigenous Peoples Day, which is June 21st today, is an opportunity to celebrate the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people's values, customs, languages, and culture. The United Church nationally has shared this service, the Seven Grandfather Teachings. It was written by Deb Anderson Pratt for the 2020 Indigenous Day of Prayer, and we thank them all for this. Dr. Olivia Smith is the program coordinator, worship, music, and spirituality at the United Church National Office. We have edited it due to the COVID-19 impacts on worship. You are invited to join the moderator of the United Church, Richard Bott, on Thursday at 5 Pacific time, 5 in the afternoon, for an online prayer vigil for peace in Korea. It is 70 years since the outbreak of war between the two Koreas. You can join that vigil through our website's event page and get more information there as well. And men who are interested are reminded there is another virtual water into wine night on Tuesday. And again, please see our website to join in. The Christ candle has been lit today on behalf of Stephanie Oya, who cannot be with us in person. As a church, we continue to work toward reconciliation with indigenous peoples. Mission and Service supports this work through your gifts for the National Indigenous Church. We are thankful that we have elders like Alvin Dixon to lead us on the path of reconciliation. Alvin was taken from his community and sent to the Alberni Residential School more than 500 kilometers away. This was the United Church of Canada-run school where many children suffered physical, psychological, and sometimes even sexual abuse. Alvin was beaten when he spoke his indigenous language rather than English. He came out of the school, earned a university degree, and later counseled others who went to residential schools. He also found comfort in the Christianity he learned at the school. 
Alvin became a leader in the path of reconciliation. He was a caretaker of the indigenous circle, a mission and service supported program. As an activist in the United Church, he helped guide us to an apology to indigenous peoples and helped drive the demand for what eventually became the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He died in 2014 of cancer at the age of 77, but his legacy of activism lives on. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you. If you have not given, please consider it. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of our mission and service. In memory of Alvin's life and his dedication to the United Church of Canada and to education, the Alvin Dixon Memorial Bursary is given annually to Indigenous students enrolled in full-time post-secondary studies. Them am I garden mel. Them am I garden mel. The canoe has to be uprated. That's what it means. The canoe has to be uprated after a mishap. So it's a metaphor of life. When you have mishaps in life or death, you have to uh, rearrange and look forward and go forward from that mishap. Oh, I, I miss the man. I, I, I've known a, a new Alvin for a long time, and uh, I was ever so pleased when he came into the church and started working for the church and uh, worked to better the situation for First Nations people in BC. Well, Alvin and I go from way back and started working with Alvin, you know, through the Native Ministry Council uh, and 30, uh, 30 years and right up to his death we worked together both provincially and nationally at different uh, gatherings. He did a lot of work through visiting different communities, you know, li listening from, listening to them, and the national gatherings and provincial gatherings, they do the same, uh, and using all what he learned and bringing it to a church house or to BC conference. He's one of these guys that uh, said it as it was. He sometimes wasn't very gentle, but was effective. He, he understood and knows traditionally who he was, and he also has a teaching degree. And so you can say that he lived both worlds. And because of the fact that he lived both worlds, he had a good understanding of our situation as Native people. Well, I think it's I think it's a, a necessary thing, uh, as long as it carries the message that it should. That we, as as people that try to lead in this United Church of Canada to be involved in the church, do it in such a way and teach people that we need to take certain steps, important steps to establish who we are, so that we are the church. And that has to continue. The work that he did to, you know, to, for, 
for the native congregations and non-native congregations to be more closer, as I said earlier, to get that canoe going in the right direction and together. And he did a lot of you know, work of bringing people together. And to name it in his honor was, uh, was the best way to show some, you know, to show respect and a big thank you for his work. ourselves on you, Creator. Come fill our hearts with your endless love and send the wind of your spirit to new hope through our lives. Come light our souls to rise in faith, to reach out for your kingdom. Come pour your spirit on upon us as we stand together as brothers and sisters. Lift up our heads Brush away the shadows and shine your grace into our minds. So, Creator, we take this time to worship. We take this time to join our hearts together, gathered, gathered or scattered, to seek transformation and to celebrate the power of your spirit that is always moving. gift of wind and the four directions from which it comes. Here we are most aware of the gift of sun and the four directions on which it shines. Here we are most aware of the gift of humanity and the four directions in which we exist. Here we are most aware of the gift of creation and the four directions which support our living, breathing, and being. This day, we pray thanksgiving for the First Nations, Inuit and Métis people of Canada, 
and we commit ourselves to be people of reconciliation in the tradition of our beloved Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. It's, it's very nice that they brought salad for the moose. Oh, I don't, I, no, I don't think so. There's that, that lovely green cedar. It's very tasty. A little at the bitter side, but very tasty. Uh, no, that's not why we have the cedar today. This is <clears throat> Indigenous Day of Prayer, and we have that today to remind us of Mother Earth because the cedar smells very nice. I don't know that it tastes so nice. To a moose, it does. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's used in ceremonies with, with smoke and fire as well. But it reminds us of Mother Earth, and both moose and people are part of Mother Earth. Well, I'm not very happy with you. You're not. Why would you not be happy with me? Well, you brought coffee for yourself and nothing for me. And nothing, for, well, you don't, do you like coffee? Oh, what? You could, you could have brought moose juice. Moose juice. Well, I, gee, I think we ran out of moose juice in the refrigerator at home. Mm -hmm. You could make some what is in moose juice. Mm. Carrot juice and apple juice and kale. Oh, it sounds delightful. You could have that one if we ever have it again. But I guess we're out just now. Mm. Well, and I'm, I'm not very happy either with the deer. With the deer, I thought you would, you would like the deer. They're sort of like your cousins, aren't they? Deer are, are something else. When I go for a snack for a lunch in Oak Bay at all those nice gardens, there are deer already there. Oh, and I, and I push them out. <laughs> but sometimes there's a whole mob of them, and they push me out. Oh, imagine that. They would push out a moose. You've got bigger antlers than they do, usually. Yeah, but, but theirs are very, very sharp. Hmm. I'm not going to be friendly with those deer. Well, you're not very friendly with a squirrel who lives near the churchyard either. He's too, too chatty. Too chatty. Hmm. What, what friends do you have out there that you're that you're not having conflict with. Mm. Can't think of anybody right now. Oh dear. Hmm. That must be kind of lonely sometimes if you're not friendly with everybody and you're remembering all these bad things that they're supposed to be doing. Well, yeah, it is kind of lonely. It's, it's so bad that all I've got is you. And you, and you brought the coffee and not the moose juice. So, mm, I have no one. Oh, that's a very sad moose. Well, there wouldn't be a way to fix that. Huh? Hmm? How? Well, it's something called reconciliation. Do I have to spell it? No, you don't have to spell it. You have to do it. What's What's, what's reconciliation? Not reconciliation, reconciliation. Yeah, that's what I said. Hmm. All right. But anyway, reconciliation is when you, go, you, you make an effort to be friends with somebody when there's bad feeling between you. And sometimes you have to take the first step rather than wait for the other deer or squirrel or whatever. Mm -hmm. how, 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 how do you do that? Well, 
It could be that maybe the deer in the Oak Bay Gardens think they were there first and, and that you're the one pushing in. So you might say that you're sorry for trying to take all the garden for yourself and you might say, we might suggest that you could share the gardens together as long as we don't ask the people in Oak Bay. Hmm. Um, you might share the gardens together so you, when you say you're sorry, you could, you could say a sorry with a friendly gesture. You can't shake hands with a deer, I guess. Hmm. But you could give them a nice nod, like that. That would be kind of friendly. And, and then it's what you do, so you have to try and put things right again. So you might share the lawn, or the garden, or the whatever, with, with the deer and the other animals and you try to be fair to everyone. And when we try to be fair to everyone and, and to see how they see things and to put right the wrongs of the past, that's reconciliation. What about, do, that's, that's for moose and little people. Well, children, yes, children have to do that. Sometimes reconciliation is with a brother or a sister or a friend maybe you had an argument with. That, that could happen with children. What, what about adults? Well, adults and grown-ups sometimes have to practice reconciliation as well. And so we have things in our service today to remind us about reconciliation with indigenous peoples. So just like you have been here for a long time, there are some humans who've been here for a very long time as well. And some of those are First Nations, or Inuit, or Métis, different kinds of people. And so we try to look to a way to be fair to everyone, that we can all share what we need to share. And you can have coffee, and I can have moose juice. Yes, people can, and moose can have what they need. And then we're glad to have that reminder, and we can share Mother Earth together, and that's what the green cedar is about behind us, that we share things together, and we try to have Reconciliation. Sounds good. Mm. Bye. And now we're going to have the song. Scripture this morning is Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. The New Revised Standard Version translation of this passage uses a word that is relevant to our time together today. The author of Matthew's Gospel speaks of reconciliation. 
and the need for it before one makes an offering. In other words, before we give to God what is sacred to us, the gift needs to be given with integrity. Let the ancient words wash over you and reside in your heart and spirit. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. This is part of our story. Thanks be to God. Again, we are grateful to those who originally wrote this service and placed it in the United Church National website for this Sunday. It is our communal prayer that soon, very soon, every community of faith will gain an understanding about the historical racism that birthed the residential school system and the Indian Act. It continues to be our prayer that reluctance to see the latest attempts by indigenous people and allies to influence the dominant culture's ignorance to the lack of just relationships will be diminished. With every fiber of his being, our beloved Jesus lived and modeled relationships grounded in mutuality, the kingdom, kingdom, realm, dominion, commonwealth, he and our loving God wish each of us to live in is here and coming. Let all of us work toward that reality for our siblings. There are seven grandfather teachings or laws that are shared with us by our people live by daily. The first is love. To know love is to know the Creator. And therefore, it's expected that one's first love is for that of the Creator, or Great Spirit. Creator is the parent of all children. The love given to the Great Spirit is expressed through self-love. If you can't love yourself, how can you love anyone else? The Great Spirit chose the eagle, represented by the feather over here, because that represents love and because the eagle soars the highest of all creatures in bringing pure vision to the seeker. Although love is the supplier of the greatest and most powerful medicine, it can also be the most elusive of the teachings as it depends on a world that acknowledges the importance of spirituality. Colossians 3.14 states, And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. by the Black Foot artist King Kuka. Respect is the condition of being honored. Respect is represented by the buffalo. Through giving its life and sharing every part of its being, the buffalo showed the deepest respect it had for people. No animal was more important to the existence of our people. Its gift provided shelter, clothing, and utensils for dirty life on the prairies. The First Nations taught and believed they were the true caretakers of the herds, and they developed a sustainable relationship with the buffalo that resulted in a relationship of true respect. We honor all the teachings the great grandmothers gave in regards to respect. A few of them included being respectful to elders by listening to what they said and by doing what they taught to do. 
And so in teaching our own children, we teach them to do what is right and respectful. 1 Peter 5 and 5 teaches, Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Courage is the ability to face danger, fear, or change with confidence and bravery. The bear teaches us courage in many lessons in the way it lives. Courage is the most important teaching the bear offers. The true definition of courage is a mother bear's ferociousness when it comes to her cubs being approached, very much like a human mother when she comes with her own child. This same ferociousness is needed to have the moral, and mental strength to overcome fears that prevent us from living our true spirit as human beings. Living in the heart and spirit is difficult. The bear's example shows us how to face any danger to achieve courage in our own lives. And 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 speaks of the spirit, God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Honesty. Honesty is speaking and acting truthfully, thereby remaining morally upright. The Sabe, or Sasquatch, represents honesty. Long ago, there was a giant called Kichisabe. It walked among the people to remind them to be honest to the law of the Creator and with each other. The highest honor bestowed on a person was the saying, there walks an honest human. They can be trusted. Keeping the promises one made to the Creator or to others and self was to be truly honest the elders said, live true to your spirit. Never try to be someone else. Ephesians 4.25 says, therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Our friend the beaver is a paragon of wisdom, and I stand behind him. Wisdom is the ability to make decisions based on personal knowledge and experience. The beaver teaches us wisdom. Community is entirely dependent on the gifts given to each member by the Creator. The beaver's example of using its sharp teeth for cutting down trees and branches to build its dams and lodges expresses this teaching. If the beaver didn't use its teeth in this way, the teeth would continue to grow until they became useless, ultimately making it impossible for the beaver to sustain itself. The same can be said for humans. One spirit will grow weak if it is not fulfilling its use. When used properly, one's gifts contribute to the development of a peaceful and healthy being and community. James Three, verse 13 says, Who is wise and understanding among you? By good conduct, let the sage work in the meekness of wisdom. The beaver is wise and understanding in knowing to use its teeth to be productive. I recognize 
the wolf icon, painted by Tony Hunt, who was a local First Nations artist. Tony carved a totem here in First Met in 2014. The wolf icon represents humility. Humility is recognizing and acknowledging that creator is a higher power than people. This is truly humbling. True humility is being humble and not arrogant. To capture true humility, one must express deference or submission to the creator through the acceptance that all human beings are equal. The expression of this humility is man manifested through the consideration of others before oneself. The wolf teaches us humility. It bows its head in the presence of others in deference. And once it is hunted, the wolf will not take any of the food until it can be shared with others in the pack. The wolf's lack of arrogance and its respect for its community is a hard lesson, but in the First Nations people's way. The wolf's actions bring to mind Chief Marie Anne de Walker Pelche, who has been chief of Okanese First Nation in Saskatchewan since 1981. Day Walker Pelche first took office in 1981 and is the longest serving chief of a First Nation in Canada. She was awarded the Order of Canada and she was recognized for the projects she spearheaded relating to education, wellness, and social assistance, as well as for her work to preserve the culture, language, and traditions of the people of Okanese First Nation. Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations Chief Bobby Cameron recognized her achievement in a media release, noting Day Walker Pelche has been leading her community for nearly four decades, and her hard work, dedication, and integrity to serve her people shines through everything that she does. Okanee's First Nation is about 90 kilometers northeast of Regina. Proverbs 18, verses Verse 12 says, Before a downfall, the heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. I believe the wolf and Chief Marie Anne de Walker Pelche are true examples of humility and honor. I refer you to the turtle icon, which represents truth. Truth is known and understood in all the original laws given by the Creator, and to remain faithful to them. The turtle teaches us about truth. It is said that in the beginning, when the Creator made humanity and gave them the sacred laws, the grandmother turtle was present to ensure that the laws would never be forgotten. On the back of a turtle, there are 13 moons, each representing the truth of one cycle of the earth around the sun. The 28 markings on the turtle's back represent the cycle of the moon of a woman's body. The shell of the turtle represents the body's real events as created by a higher power and serves as a reminder of the creator's will and teachings. First John 5.20 We know also the Son of God has come and given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in God who is true by being in Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life.
God, creator and great mystery, we praise you this day for the gifts you have provided all people. Creator, we come to you with humility, respect, courage, and honesty, seeking your wisdom, generosity, and love. We lift up all people for healing, comfort, and your compassion. We pray for the missing and murdered Indigenous women, young girls, men, and boys. May they be wrapped in your arms of comfort. We pray for the families of the missing and murdered, that they receive comfort in their loss, that they might receive justice. We remember the communities of those who are mourning loved ones who have been murdered, and also those who are seeking answers for family members who are still missing. We remember the family and communities at Port Alberni and Edmundston, New Brunswick, of Chantelle Moore, especially her mother, Martha Martin, and her little daughter, Gracie. The full number of those who have gone missing or have been murdered is known only to you, sustaining God. And you know the depth of pain experienced by the families, communities, and friends grieving their loss. You have called us to reconciliation. You have called us to love justice and to open our hearts to your brothers and sisters facing violence. We pray for all who fight against injustices endured. We pray they have your compassionate ear. We pray for strength and endurance for them. Just as the elders prayed, we pray for renewal and the restoration of beauty to the land and its people. And we pray for the elders and their traditional leadership as they lead. We pray for Mother Earth, the waters, the winds, for our siblings, the animals, birds, and fish, and all of life that surrounds us. We pray for that day that would come soon when the traditional spirituality is honored and that we will all walk with courage, honesty, humility, love, respect, truth, and wisdom. We offer this prayer in humility and hope and in the name of our brother Jesus, the one who lights our path to wholeness, justice, and peace. Creator, mend the circle. Restore us to the good way. We ask this in your name and the love of Jesus Christ, the peacemaker. Amen. She is our sister. 
The blessing comes from the poetry of Chief Dan George. May the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, may silence make you strong. Amen.